uh, gives an excellent overview of what uh, communism is all about. And of course, at that time, communism uh, controlled about a third of, uh, of the uh, world's population, a quarter of the world's landmass. And the J. Edgar Hoover quotes uh, Khrushchev at that time. In June of 1957, Nikata Khrushchev, the Soviet Communist Party boss, was interviewed before a nationwide American television audience. And with calm assurance, he stated, I can prophesy that your grandchildren in America will live under socialism. And please don't be afraid of that. Your children will not understand how their grandparents did not understand the progressive nature of a socialist society. Now, isn't it interesting that Khrushchev would say your grandchildren will live under socialism, not under communism? But you have to understand that every communist works for socialism. Uh, there is no communism. lies for old. Many of you, if you listen to Barbara Walters, Tom Brokaw, or Dan Rather, may have heard that there is no longer any communism in the world, that we won the Cold War. Communism is dead. <clears throat> and if that indeed is true, then why do 1.2 billion people live in communist China? And there's communism in North Korea, there's communism in Vietnam, there's communism in Cuba. In fact, I used to live in Africa, as I mentioned earlier, and the communists there control Rhodesia under Mugabe. Uh, they dominate South Africa, and if Nelson Mandela is not a communist, he'll do to one comes along. I've seen him uh, with his raised clenched, flag, raised clenched fist in front of the um, communist flag. Uh, he surrounded himself by communists, the man slated to do, replace him in, indeed as a communist. Southwest Africa, well, that they're going to become more democratic. They are going to tear down the Berlin Wall, which is what they did. We didn't tear down the Berlin Wall. They tore it down. Uh, the Solidarity is going to take control uh, in Poland, and of course, uh, they're going to convince you to go ahead and unilaterally disarm, and you'll give them more and more and more money so they can build themselves up in preparation for the inevitable war that they believe is coming. Another article that comes out of the New York Times in March of 19, Finance Russia, directly or indirectly since the time of the Russian Revolution back in 1917, because communism or socialism doesn't work. It's always had to have help from the West. Uh, this is a, a fax I get regularly from J. Michael Waller. Uh, the headline here, IMF promises more money as Russia threatens to arm Serbia. Where do you think that the Serbians get their MiG fighters and their anti-aircraft batteries? And uh, where do you think that they get uh, the wherewithal to withstand the intense bombing uh, that the Americans have uh, brought against them? Now, of course, they get their backing from Russia, and where does Russia get its backing? Why well, they get their backing from us. Here's one from J. Michael Waller. Prophecy Club carries, uh, pardon me, from um, uh, Jeff Nyquist. Prophecy Club carries material from Jeff Nyquist. I think it's accurate. As he points out, that Russia is stockpiling oil and food and a goal in preparation for war because they believe war. I believe his book is available here. And he will tell you that the Soviets not only believe that nuclear war is fightable, they believe nuclear war is winnable. They have an anti-ballistic missile system. We have no anti-ballistic missile system. Whenever we talk about uh, building war, the Russians say, why would anybody want an anti-ballistic missile system uh, if they weren't planning on war? We had one, incidentally. Uh, we tore it down in the, in the late 1970s under Jimmy Carter. Uh, because it was too expensive to keep up. Uh, the Russians not only have an anti-ballistic missile system, they have 12,000 surface-to-air missiles. Uh, they have a plan by which they can detonate a nuclear device in the stratosphere uh, if, if uh,